let's move on to actually programming the Diver Sprite. So again, we're just going to click into our Diver Sprite and go into the Code tab. So first things first, we should do some housekeeping here. So I want to create a variable to keep track of the amount of trash that I collect as well as a variable to keep track of the number of garbage that I missed or the ones that fell to the sea, seabed that I failed to pick up. So I can go into this dark orange section where it says variables and I can click make a variable and I created missed trash collected as well as two variables for the speed. One called negative speed and one that stands for positive speed. Notice that if you check these boxes, it will make your variables appear on the screen. And if I uncheck them, they will disappear. Okay, awesome. So at the very beginning, I'm going to say that when the green flag is clicked, I want to switch my backdrop to the underwater scene. Next, what I want to do is I want to set all my variables to their starting values. So for example, the number of missed garbage is gonna be zero, the number of trash collected is gonna be zero. That just means we're starting a fresh game. Next, I made my positive and negative speed to be two and negative two respectively, but you can change this depending on um, what, how fast or slow you want your diver to be. Next, you want to program the arrow keys for your diver. So I used a forever loop so that this would happen as long as the game was running. So I made four blocks that essentially say if the up arrow, down arrow, left arrow, and right arrow key pressed, my diver would move in that respective direction. I can use the change x, y, and change y by blocks to tell my diver which direction to face. And be careful by using which variable you use here either positive speed or negative speed. We want to use positive when we're going to the right or going up, and we want to use negative when we're going left or to the down direction. After we program our four arrow keys, then we want to say what our stopping condition is. So one of them was if we missed five pieces of garbage that were uncollected, we're going to say that we want the game to stop. So you can use this operator's block if you go into this green section, you'll find a block where it has like blank equals blank. So we're gonna get one that says if missed equals five. And again, the way we get these orange bubbles is going into the variables section and pulling the blocks and putting them inside. So if missed equals five, then we want our backdrop to switch over to the game over backdrop. And we wanna broadcast the message game over to our other sprites so they know that they should stop moving and they should probably hide behind the screen. To stop everything, you can use the block called stop all. Moving into our shark sprite. So this is the sprite that the player wants to avoid. If we touch the shark, then the game is gonna be over immediately. So you can see that when the green flag is clicked, we're just going to tell the shark to show up uh, we're going to say that set the rotation style left to right so it doesn't flip upside down or do anything too funky. Next, we're going to use another forever loop, which is just going to say as long as this game is running, we want these things to uh, keep going. So we're going to use a conditional statement and if then else statement. Here, what we want to do is that in our game, we notice that our shark sometimes comes from the right and then sometimes it comes from the left. How do we decide? which direction the shark is coming in from? Well, it's actually random. Um, we can actually simulate this randomness by asking Sprite to pick a random number between one and two. And if that random number scratch picks is one, then we're gonna tell our shark to come in from the right side of the screen. If we pick the other number, which is two, then we want our shark to come in from the left side of the screen. You can kind of think of this like flipping a coin. So if we land heads, we're gonna come from the right side, and if we land tails, we're gonna come from the other side of the screen. We also want our shark to be always checking if it's touching our diver, because if our diver is touching our shark, then we want the game to automatically end. So you can use another forever loop here, and 
use a conditional statement saying if touching diver, then we're going to switch the backdrop to game over, broadcast the game over message, and stop all. Stop all the sprites from moving. Uh, so this is very similar to what we did in the diver sprite earlier. You'll also notice that when the game over sprite or the game over background is shown, all of these sprites except for the diver disappears behind this wallpaper. What we can, how we can do that is we can see a block that says when I receive game over, remember earlier we used the broadcast game over message, we can use this block by saying when I receive the game over message, I want my sprite to hide. Next, let's take a look at our garbage sprite. So I'm in, I have six pieces of garbage, but just notice that we want all of the garbage to function the same way. So we can actually just program one of our sprites and then just duplicate the code for the rest. So in the garbage sprite, I'm going to use the when green flag click block. Again, because the sprites might be hidden because the game was over in the previous game, when I click the green flag, we want them all to show up again. Uh, so just like what I did there. Uh, we also want our garbage to start falling from the top of the screen, but somewhere random in terms of the X axis. So the highest level of the screen is around 150 and for go to x we want that to change because it could sometimes fall from the left side or the right side or the middle. So we can say pick a random x value between negative 220 to positive 220. What that's going to do is our garbage will fall from the top of the screen but may change which x axis it's falling from. Next, we're going to use a forever loop because we want our garbage to keep falling down. So we can say change y by minus one. Again, if you want to make your game a little bit harder, you can make this a negative value, such as negative two, negative three, negative four. That means our garbage is going to be taking more negative steps each second, and it's going to be appearing as it's falling faster. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to use two if statements, uh, which are going to check if it's touching our diver and if it's touching our seabed. If it's touching our diver, we're going to say that our diver has collected or picked up that garbage. So we want to change our trash collected variable by positive one. So we're just adding one and incrementing how many pieces of trash we've collected here. And then because it's been picked up, we want our garbage to go away and start back at the top. So we're using this block from above, uh, right inside this conditional again. Similarly, we also want to check if it's touching the seabed. And if it is, we're going to change our missed variable by a positive one because we've missed a piece of garbage and it's fallen to the ground and we didn't get a chance to pick it up. Again, once it's at the bottom of the seabed, we want it to keep falling, so we're going to send it back to the top of the screen. Again, with this similar go to x random and random and y150 block. Remember that broadcast message game over block we used earlier? Here, what we're going to say is when I receive game over, we want our garbage to hide behind the game over backdrop. So all of our garbage is going to behave in the similar way. So a very useful hack to use is that you can use the backpack function in Scratch. So at the very bottom of the screen, you'll see something that says backpack. What you can do is you can just click on your code and drag it to the backpack and let go. And we'll just drag these two blocks here. So here's how to pull the blocks from your backpack to a new sprite. So you're going to go into your backpack, put the code blocks that you want to drag, and just drag them up like so, and they should just pop into place. So we're going to drag these two. Cool. And we're going to repeat this for all of our pieces of trash in our game. Next, let's program our bubble sprite. So you might remember that in our game, the bubble sprite gave us a temporary speed boost if the diver caught it. So pretty similar to the other sprites, we're going to use this when I receive game over block and tell our sprite to hide so that it can hide behind that backdrop. And when the green flag is clicked, we want it to show again. Just like the garbage blocks, we want it to be falling from the top of the screen and again from like a random X location. 
and we want to make our bubble keep sinking down. Because this bubble is a special boost uh, that gives us our player a temporary speed boost, we want to make it a little bit harder to catch than the ordinary garbage sprites. So here, I every second I change my Y by minus three, so it's a little, it's floating pretty fast. Next, we're gonna use a if statement conditional here to ask if it's touching the diver. Then we want to hide, go to a new location, and give our get and give our diver about three seconds of a speed boost. So you'll see that those pause speed and neg speed variables that we made earlier are super useful here. Our pause with speed to six and our negative speed to minus six and wait one second each time. So when this repeats three times, about three seconds have passed, I set pause speed and neg speed back to two and negative two respectively. We also wanna check if our bubble is touching our seabed. So similar to the garbage sprites, if it is, then we want it to float back to the very top of the screen, again at a random X location and at a positive 150 Y value. And there you have it. Great job, you just created this ocean cleanup game. Feel free to get creative and add any bonus features that you can think of.